Hi, we're here to talk about 802.11ax. I'm David Coleman from Technical Marketing at Arrowhive and co-author of the CWNA Study Guide. So with 802.11n and 802.11ac technology, new PHI and MAC layer enhancements were introduced to achieve higher data rates. We built bigger highways and we built faster cars. But the problem is this, it's a traffic jam. We have a big traffic mess. So what's the solution moving forward? The solution is going to be traffic management. So always remember in the wireless environment, RF is a half duplex medium. At any given time, only one radio can transmit on that half duplex medium. Every radio takes turns. So airtime consumption in itself and medium contention in itself is consumes and creates a lot of overhead. Also, let's talk about the differences between data rates and throughputs. A data rate is not the same thing as TCP throughput. Medium contention protocol of carrier sense multiple axis collision avoidance consumes most of the available bandwidth, as I just mentioned. So therefore, your aggregate TCP throughput of a legacy ABG environment is gonna be about 50, 40 to 50% of the data rate in ideal conditions. If you move into N and AC technology, even in that environment, your TCP throughput is only going to be about 60 to 70 percent of the advertised data rate. And that's in laboratory conditions. As a matter of fact, the efficiency of the MAC sublayer actually drops as more client stations join in the wireless environment. As more clients join, you get increases in collisions and more medium contention overhead. Um, in today's environment, we have a high density of clients and the bulk of our data frames that are transmitted by these clients are about 75 to 80 percent of these data frames. They're really small and they're under 256 bytes. So the re result is, is that the overhead at the MAC layer and the medium contention overhead for each small frame is enormous. And that in itself is one of the biggest problems with 802.11n and AC technology in today's modern networks. So the future is 802.11ax. 802.11ax is the high efficiency amendment defined by the IEEE and the technology coming soon. 802.11ax is going to use PHI and MAC layer enhancements for better traffic management, a more efficient use of the medium. The goal is to increase average throughput four times per user in high density scenarios. Unlike AC technology, which only operates in 5 gigahertz, AX will operate in both 2.4 gigahertz and the 5 gigahertz bands. Okay, so what is new in 802.11ax? Well, there's quite a bit. Um, uh, let me just give you a high level overview. Four things, OFDMA, orthogonal frequency division multiple access, which is a better use of the frequency space. And that's the main thing I'm gonna concentrate on. Something called BSS coloring, which helps mitigate OBSS and clear channel interference. In the future, possibly uplink and downlink multi-user MIMO for up to eight devices. Uh, 802.11ac only had downlink multi-user MIMO for up to four devices. And even though higher data rates is not really the goal of AX, there is going to be uh, uh, more complex modulation available, uh, 1024 QAM, which will give us higher data rates and modulation encoding schemes as well. So there is a lot of differences between 802.11n and AC and AX. There is a big change in basically the frequency multiplexing, which is what I'm gonna talk about. Uh, AC and N used orthogonal frequency division multiplexing. AX can use OFDM as well to be backwards compatible, but it also uses a, a new technology called orthogonal frequency division multiple access. So let's talk about the difference between the two. OFDM, which was uh, used in AG and in AC, you might have a, a specific channel, and on each specific channel, you'll have various subcarriers. Now, 
However, even though you're transmitting in unison on those OFDM subcarriers, when a client or radio transmits, it has to use all the subcarriers in that individual channel. So once again, at any given time, only one client radio is transmitting across all the subcarriers in, a, say, a 20 megahertz channel. Now, with OFDMA, orthogonal frequency division multiple access, we can divide that channel up into what are called resource units. So let's say we have a 20 megahertz channel. I can actually have two clients transmitting at the same time on this 20 megahertz channel. Maybe one of the clients is using 10 megahertz and another client is using subcarriers that uh, add up to another 10 megahertz. Maybe four clients are transmitting at the same time on a 20 megahertz channel, each using five megahertz of space in that 20 megahertz channel. Or once again, one client using the whole uh, 20 megahertz channel. Bottom line is, this is not the same thing as multi-user MIMO. Instead, this is subdividing into smaller channels called resource units. Another big change in 802.11ax is that the AP is in charge. The AP controls the medium both for downlink and uplink, and that can be for frame per frame. Um, additionally, uh, when you're doing this with, in combination with OFDMA, the AP can, trans, can adjust transmit power, can be adjusted per resource unit. So the number of subchannels and resource units can vary from packet to packet and the AP decides how the client transmits on the up uplink. So this is a big change in uh, Wi-Fi where the access point can actually synchronize upstream transmissions. There are other improvements as well um, that are coming in the future in 802.11ax, something called BSS coloring, uh, which is going to be effectively an adaptive way of handling CCI and a special, better spatial reuse efficiency. Um, and there's also going to be enhancements in the phi layer to give uh, optimized for not just high density indoors, but also for outdoors and also for greater range outdoors. And finally, there's going to be more enhanced power saving mechanisms with 802.11ax, which will help conserve battery life and will be ideal for IoT devices. Thanks very much for watching this presentation.